He can pick and choose any Marine that exposes himself because he has the ultimate view from the top down, unobstructed in the front, of all the movements that are down in there. And we have the obstructed view looking from the ground up. And we're also looking at a multitude of random buildings, so we don't know where it's coming from. The sniper proceeds to pin the Marines down and make their lives miserable for the next few hours. We had Marines that were taking refuge behind the headstones. And as they were starting to move, the sniper would hit the top of the headstone or the side of the headstone at wherever they were trying to expose their body. And he would notch out and you'd see pieces of masonry fly. The sniper soon takes a victim. It's about 1 p.m. And now we're getting a head count and we're missing one Marine. He had taken refuge down in a little walled-in structure that was where one of the tombs was at. Kind of out of sight, so we thought he's just slumping down, maybe taking a drink or whatever, but the corpsman didn't see him. So they had finally went down in there because he wasn't rogering up. First Sergeant LeHue and others eventually locate him. He had already probably been in that position for 20 minutes. Uh, he had taken a sniper shot through his neck collar piece. Uh, which is not meant to stop an impact of a straight-on shot from a Dragunov rifle. It's meant for fragmentation or anything else. It's not meant to stop the impact of the bullet. Just then, another oddity of fighting in the Muslim cemetery occurs. Despite the battle, five times a day, a call to prayer is sounded at the top of a nearby mosque. Each time that happened, the firing would stop and the insurgents would either play or they would take that time to say this is holy time for five minutes. It happens now and First Sergeant LeHue and three other Marines take advantage of the time to evacuate the Marines body. The entire time this is happening not a shot is going off or anything and this took a good amount of time to, to get his body out of there was at least 20 minutes. The sniper holds his fire well after the prayer time has expired. In my professional opinion, whoever that sniper was had enough respect. He knew he killed that kid and he knew what we were doing and I think to this day he allowed us to remove that kid off the battlefield and once he knew we had our dead off the battlefield, he engaged target's opportunity again. The sniper is shooting from several rooms and balconies of a hotel building overlooking the cemetery. He changes his firing position to another room in the hotel after every shot, so that even if the Marines see his muzzle flash, they'll miss him if they fire at him. The hotel is several hundred yards distant, but the Marines soon come up with a way to detect him and pin him down. There are Marine tanks present, positioned on the only major road through the cemetery. When the Marines spot the sniper shooting from one of the hotel rooms, they ask the tank gunners to fire at the room and destroy it. Eventually, the tanks destroy so much of the hotel, the sniper has nowhere left to hide. After a certain sustained period of time of blasting, the sniper had disappeared. It just went away.